Audition shares an interface style with many of the other applications in the Creative Cloud suite. So you can see it has this sort of basic gray look to it. And what's interesting about it is it's modular, which means that a lot of these different sections can be moved around, shown and hidden, and generally played about with. This makes it very easy to customize Audition to work in a way that suits you for the particular task that you're doing. And if you look up at the top here, you can see that there are various different ways to manage your windows. So I can flip into edit audio to video mode. If I was doing radio production, I might want a different set of windows and sections open. And if I click on this little more section here, you can see I'm able to switch between different layouts. So if I was doing mastering, I might want a different set of meters. If I was restoring audio, again, I would need a different set of tools. You can actually manage these in the window workspace menu. So you can create your own custom ones, save them, revert them, and move between them. If I just flip back to the regular edit audio to video section, you can see that along the top here, we have a couple of different views. We have waveform view, which is for editing individual waveforms. And we have multi-track view, which is more like a little bit more like a conventional DAW in the sense that you have multiple tracks of audio that you can mix between and create kind of collages or montages of audio. Within the waveform view, this here at the top is the regular waveform. Underneath is a spectral view, which we will talk about later. You can flip between different kinds of views. So this one here is spectral frequency display. And this is the spectral pitch display. Down at the bottom here, you have level meters. An orphan crop. One that has received very little attention from the international research. Now, each of these sections can be moved around and even undocked, if you like. So, for example, if I wanted to undock the level section, I could click on its little button here and click undock panel. I'm now free to move that wherever I like. Community. So, if I wanted to put it back, I pick it up by its kind of title bar here and I just drag it back in to where it was. And the same applies to many of these other sections. So, here's my effects rack, for instance. It too has this little three line icon. I could click on undock and I could then float my effects panel if I wanted to. If I wanted to put it back, pick it up by its title bar and drop it back in where it was. We'll talk in more detail later about exactly what each of these sections does, but that's a very quick overview of the interface. You can see that you can zoom in quite easily. If you have a trackpad, you can use two finger swipes to zoom around like this, which is quite helpful. Up at the top here, you have a toolbar tools we'll talk about later, but you have things like time selection, marquee selection, lasso, paintbrush, and so forth. And you can change the dimensions of those tools as well. Let's have a quick look now at setting the preferences.